Hello, it's Peter from WhatCulture.com here. And Scott from WhatCulture.com. And we have spent a few days playing The Last Guardian. Which seems crazy now that you say it, because it's one yeah. of those games that's been, it's almost mythical at this point. Someone over at Sony must have just got Fumito Ueda and just been like, can you just release it? Yeah. Just get it out there so now it's finally available. Now, talking of, you know, potentially rushing it out, get it out there, what are your first impressions? Do you think it, it's it's it, it's justified that it's taken such a long time, or it's been rushed out at the last minute, or...? No, I don't think it's been rushed. I think it's a weird metric, because a lot of people are coming into it going like, well, is this a game that looks like something that was developed for 10 years? Yeah. No. But my initial impressions when I first played it were, okay, this is everything I need it to be. I right. really loved it for the first few hours. I thought uh, Trico's animation and his AI, or its AI, were like phenomenal. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and coming out of it, I was like, okay, this is, you can tell the bits that they've plucked from Ico and like the bits that they've taken from Shadow of the Colossus, they've taken the scope, the scale. For me, it was, it was really, really good. But that kind of segued into more of like a feeling of negativity as it went on. But I mean, what, what was your what was your take? I mean, I went on the same the same path. I started out more positive, and, and as it went, I I became less uh, mm. enthusiastic. I think you had more reservations about it, perhaps because it has been in the making for so long. And mm. you know, you've got things like Duke Nukem forever. <laughs> oh, you know, God. That's a prime example of, of all the comparisons. If you wait around for long enough, so it doesn't matter how how much work you put in, it's just not going to work. But it's kind of, I feel like it's come out the other we way. Might have flipped, Overall, yeah. now yeah. you're, although you may have like found it less good as you went on, you're still kind of positive overall. Oh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, definitely. But for me, less so. What sort of stuff put you off a little bit? My, I think my, my headline problem mm. is probably the controls and the movement, right. and kind of responsiveness. Not only the boy, my, you know, my own character, but. Who has no name, I don't he's think. Just the boy. The boy. I think that's what his name is. Boy? Um, but also, well, I, I say Trico, you say Trico. Oh, well. The boy kind of, I, I, I feel like he says Trico there when you press the call button. I, it's like, it's, it's, you, you can it say Trico be. if you want. Yes, I'm going to go with Trico. I'm Team Trico, Trico. Cool. hashtag Team Trico. <laughs> it's spelled the same, so that doesn't work. It is, but, but I mean, tomato, tomato, tomato. Okay. Sorry. Uh, controlling the boy. <laughs> yes. I, I kind of feel like it's the, as though he's been designed for a different environment mm. and he's been dropped in. <laughs> now, he's got that adaptive, like, locomotion. Uh, he, you know, he sticks his arms out against walls mm. and, uh, you know, he'll, he'll sort of dodge around and tumble and builds up momentum. And I, overall, I'm, a, I'm an advocate of that and mm. I love games that do that. It feels more natural. You're not just stuck to, like, four axes, four directions. Um, but I feel like he's he's been built with that to such an extent and then dropped into what is some pretty rugged terrain you know yeah. we're walking around ruins there's cracks there's there's loose tiles all over the place and i kind of feel like he reacts too much to you know broken steps and and that sort of thing. It's a little bit clumsy. Yeah. Um, which I think, I mean, that's one of my overall takes from it is that it, or every single bit of it feels very deliberate. Yeah. I think that they've gone out, I mean, in terms of the movement, it's exactly the same as Shadow of the Colossus. Yeah. It's very it much, you know, you land and he stumbles, he gathers his feet and then he keeps going. Yeah. There's definitely a, a, a sense of momentum to everything, yeah. which does feel clumsy, but to me, I actually quite like that because it is it is like a boy trying to climb, trying to like get small, through these you environments. Know, you see toddlers sort of falling over. They take three steps and then they're just on the floor. Mm. It's, it's that kind of. I mean, he's not a toddler, but you know what I mean. But he's that a young sort of boy. yeah, that sort of like energetic, like scrabbling to get, like yeah. especially when you start interacting with Trico of Trigo, and like um, you want to get onto him and you're sort of like running after him, like falling, like. Yeah. I, I don't mind that. It does get in the way of some of the climbing, which I guess is like one of the problems you were saying about some of the, the puzzles that revolve around climbing. Kind yeah, of thing. I mean, I, I understand that and I can see maybe it was deliberate. I think something you said outside the studio was that it's very much the creator's vision and yeah. there's no, there's little to no conformity or like troping or he's just gone, this is how I'm going to make the game. That's that's one of the biggest positives, which is going to be one of the biggest negatives too. Like it's, yeah. it's not a mainstream game. Like as much as Sony are pushing this as this massive, you know, 10 years in the Making, big Last Guardian thing that's really not for a mainstream audience. I mean, yeah. there's no vision modes, there's no markers, there's no way to help you through. If you get stuck, it is you and that bird dog thing, Trigo, trying to figure out the way out and that's it. There's no real help or anything. Um, I like that, I think that's quite refreshing, especially in today's modern climate with a lot of hand-holding in other yeah. games. But I can see that putting a lot of people off. I think there's a way to do it. I think mm. I like having no hood. I like, uh, you know, having little to no hand-holding. Um, but I do find myself getting stuck a lot. And I think part of the problem is that one small aspect of like hint giving that I have noticed is that Trico does seem to, to some extent, he'll kind of look where you meant, I don't yeah. know if you notice that, yeah, yeah. Like, like look up at a ledge and you go, oh, he's looking at that, I guess I'm meant to be going up there. But then later on, I was getting confused a little bit because 
Although his idle animations are a masterclass, and I yes. think we'll talk, talk about that yeah, in a minute. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes I find him looking quite intently at certain ledges or, or doorways, and I'm like, well, it must be something to do with that. <laughs> so I feel like if you're going to set a precedent of, okay, let's let's have a subtle hint by making the creature look to where mm. he's supposed to be going, you need to be careful with what he then does you know, looking in an erroneous place. Because you end up taking every one of his yeah. animations as gospel, which Absolutely. like... I, I mean, to get on to um, Trago's general animation, for me, this is the thing that sells the game. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't think there's been a better animal done in video games, like, ever. No. I mean, we've had uh, Peter Molyneux and the dog in Fable 2, <laughs> and, like, um, Trago is on another level. Yeah. Like, I mean, if you've owned an animal yourself, you'll know that whole, that weird connection that we have with, like, animals, where you go, like, I wonder what they're thinking. I can kind of tell what they're thinking. Yeah. And that comes through wholeheartedly. Like, I, I like the stuff where he's a little bit, you know, sure of where he's going to go and you can you can guide him I mean like in terms of controlling and um, you can call him to you and then a, a few hours into the game you learn like four more commands yeah. some, some of his abilities in terms of his general animation it's very um, he's reactive like he's reacting to the environment sometimes along with you yeah. and when that syncs up it's there's a really great feeling of yeah. it's me and this monster this this creature exploring together mm -hmm. and for me there's they had some really cool like what felt like dynamic moments where like I climbed up a thing and I turned around and I said in my head come on like, yeah. you know, come on, and he like looks up and he sort of thinks about it, and then he jumps up and you're like, yeah, yeah good boy. Yeah. And like, when that hits, there's nothing else like that. I'm just like, that's that's really cool. That's very, very well done. Yeah. The main event in this game, as it should be, is the creature itself. Yeah. And not only does it, not only is it animated really well, I think it looks fantastic. Oh, I God, yeah, the visuals. probably the best yeah. looking part of the entire game. Mm. I think in terms of the environments, some of the interior areas are a bit bland, a bit samey. Uh, I find that when you get outside, though, things look better, mm. partly because I think the lighting engine has been done really well. The yeah, they've got, light. there's some great bloom effects, like yeah. especially when you um, you come out of the temples, like, I mean, it's been done in a few games now, yeah. but like when you come out, you get the whole, you're blinded by the light and then you- Fallout style. Fallout style, and like you sort of, it feels a little bit, or I, I kind of think it feels like it only has two tile sets for environments. Yeah. Um, so far, anyway. I mean, I'm you know I'm a, I'm a fair whack through it. Right. But it's you're either in brown interiors or you're in green and light light grey exteriors, and they look very they look nice. They look great, especially yeah. the exteriors look phenomenal. Yeah. But over the over the course of the how long the game is like ten plus hours, mm -hmm. um, box puzzles, climbing, it, it does get repetitive. I think he's also not super responsive. I think the animations themselves, as we said, are good. Mm. But getting him to actually do them. That is, was that's that the. Problem. That's the weirdest thing with the way that you control them because once you learn the four other commands um, You can say like, you know, you point and you go blah 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 and then like he sort of looks and he thinks about it But if you hit anything else, it's kind of like there's a weird kind of push and pull with how much you can tell him to do Yeah, so. I kind of like what you what you've said to me about uh, I think you compared it to well you said it's it's quite like having an actual cat yeah. or I mean let's say a dog I think that's slightly more but yeah, dogs are yeah, but uh, but you know you're you're going Please do this thing. <laughs> I'm trying to get you to do it. And I can see that some people would find that, you know, oh, it's a great simulation of having a, a giant pet. It's as annoying as having a real cat when it won't come to you. Exactly. But I think while some people might call that a plus, I think others would say, I don't want to have to deal with that kind of thing. That's, yeah, that, the crowd. yeah, that's that's what factors into my whole, it's the best animal in a game ever. Like, yeah. it comes with the downsides of that too. It does, yeah. Like, um, which I like, and I'm a cat owner, so I'm like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get on board with that right. weird sort of temperamental mentality that cats mm -hmm. have. Um, so whether you're a dog or a cat person might even dictate Maybe. how I'm you're going to approach person. that. Maybe well, there you go. This is it. We figured it out. Yeah. Uh, in terms of the puzzles and stuff, yeah. And um, what you're actually doing, like minute to minute, other than interacting with Trico and climbing stuff, mostly seems to boil down to find a switch yeah. or find a crate. It's not that they're necessarily arduous or like hard, but no, in I, the long run, I found them to be quite repetitive. I found them repetitive, and I found that they're not difficult in as much as they've not been built in a complex way. No. But I struggle as well to find. To know what is a real ledge and what isn't. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I think the actual grabbable ledges are few and far between. I think pretty yep. much the only grabbable ledges are the ones that you're supposed to take, which in a way is good because mm. once you found a ledge, jump on you're it, away, you're, yeah. you're on the right lines. But at the same time, they're not actually super visible. You know, something mm. like Uncharted, you know, like, oh, yeah, it's supposed it's, to go. Yeah, it's not Mirror's Edge where it like tell, like highlights yeah. the ledge. That's the thing, if you, you drill it down, like, they, they're they not making a game for the mainstream. No. They're making a game for people who loved um, Ico and Shadow of the Colossus yeah. and loved the back and forth and the physics and the feel of those games. And like the companionship as well. And the, yeah, definitely the companionship. Um, that's that's the thing, you in terms of the stuff that they've pulled from those other two games, like, yeah. that sort of, like, no, you come to me kind of yeah. feel. And, they, yeah. they, you know, like, you can tell the team are just, they want you to interact with 
standard systems, mm. it's not going to tell you what you need to do. No. I remember w one case in point, actually, where they've clearly just gone, like, screw you to conformity. <laughs> is uh, I, was, I was standing on this ledge, you might even remember, there's a broken bridge mm. that's supposed to jump across. Mm -hmm. uh, but in order to get there, it took me 15 to 20 minutes to realize oh. I can fit through those bars. <laughs> the same thing. And that is the kind of thing where <laughs> if you're if you're if you've been gaming for twenty for for twenty years, yep. you don't know that you can fit through a portcullis because you just can't fit through portcullises <laughs> in games. That never ever happens. Once you work it out, you're like, well, obviously I can. I mean, I could see that I could fit through there, but I just didn't bother. You just, yeah, it's very true. It's like a waist high wall. Yeah. You, just, you can't get over it. Oh, but you, yeah, that's. Yeah. I had the exact same thing, and I went, oh, of course I can get through that space. Yeah, and in a way, Brilliant. you can kind of hear the devs going. <laughs> you're an idiot. Like, why? You know, you're supposed to go through there. You can see, like, there's a corridor, yep. and you're thinking, how do I get through those really wide bars? Just walk through it, mate. Yeah, just walk through it. So, Brilliant. unapologetic is what it is. Yeah, I think it, it feels as proficient, as artistic, and as intentionally unapologetic as Ico and Shadow of the Colossus. Yeah, which is just as in line with what I wanted. I think it's a perfect like third part of that trilogy. Mm -hmm. um, so for me, I'm very positive on it. But the only thing that gets in the way is the occasional Trico stuff. Yeah, um, and uh, the repetition of some of the puzzles. Yeah, I think technically and sometimes visually it's a bit last gen. You can tell it's mm. been being made for 10 years. Um, mm -hmm. There are pros and cons and I should mm. play a bit more before I make my mind up. It's, it's going to divide, you know, it's going to divide people like any sort of game not yeah. targeted for a, ma a mass audience would and I, I appreciate that, I like that, I like the artistic vision that they've kept. Intentionally so, like it feels like the thing that they should have released straight after Shadow of the Colossus. Yeah. For better or worse, this is the game that you wanted 10 years ago. Yeah. So is. for me that's a positive but I get that there's a bunch of things that they could have refined further given the time they had in development. Yeah, that's the thing. Mm. When it's something, when it's been that long. As a, as objectively as a game game though, I thought it comes together fairly well. Yeah, I'll give it some more time mm -hmm. and uh, we'll do a full review this week. Cool. So, as always, don't forget to like, share and subscribe and stay tuned for a full review and plenty more reviews for other games. Yes. Uh, I've been Peter from whatculture.com. And I'm Scott from whatculture.com. And we'll see you soon.